Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today our video about Hashimoto's thyroiditis on ultrasound. First, I'll begin with an introduction about Hashimoto's thyroiditis and then the ultrasound features and signs of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Autoimmune Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the most common of the chronic thyroiditis and the most common cause of hypothyroidism. The mechanisms of its development are not fully understood. Partial genetic defect in the immune system is supposed. As a result, thyroid tissue is subject to specific morphological changes ranging from lymphocytic infiltration to fibrous replacement. Incidence peaks at 40 to 60 years of age. Usually, the whole gland is affected. The thyroid gland may be enlarged, but often the size is normal. Hypothyroidism is diagnosed at presentation or subsequently develops in 50% of cases. Most autoimmune thyroiditis initially present with a transient hyperthyroidism state. About 1 to 10% of cases of hyperthyroidism are related to a thyroiditis. Thereafter, the thyroid hormone level returns to eothyroidism or falls down to permanent hypothyroidism and requires lifelong replacement therapy. Over 90% of cases of clinical hypothyroidism are a consequence of an autoimmune thyroiditis. In most cases, Autoimmune thyroiditis is diagnosed based on clinical signs and laboratory tests TSH, T3, T4, antithyroid peroxidase, antithyroglobulin, antibodies, and others. In some patients, especially with no symptoms of impaired thyroid function, ultrasound is the first diagnostic modality to suspect autoimmune thyroiditis. In patients with diagnosed autoimmune thyroiditis, ultrasound serves for differential diagnosis with other thyroid diseases, follow-up, and detection of concomitant thyroid diseases. Transient acute phase typically starts with lymphocytic infiltration in the isthmus and the anterior aspects of thyroid loops, represented with homogeneous, uniform hypoechoic spots and areas with ill-defined margins. Spreading infiltration confers all aspects of both loops in subacute phase accompanied with the enlargement of the entire thyroid gland and irregular hypervascularity. The common grayscale image of autoimmune thyroiditis in the majority of patients is registered in chronic phase. It is characterized with the following ultrasound signs. Number one, enlargement or normal size of the thyroid loops and isthmus, with predominant enlargement of the depths and widths of the loops. The atrophic type of the disease results in a decreased thyroid volume. Number two, a regular decrease in echo density, diffuse heterogeneity of the parenchyma from fine-grained to coarse-grained, resulting from hypoechoic areas of various sizes distributed within the thyroid tissue, sometimes merging into each other. Number three, echogenic inclusions with different shapes, more common linear septa or point-like, related to the stromal component. Number four, tuberosity of the posterior surface blurred rough margins. This picture shows chronic phase autoimmune thyroiditis sonograms A. Grayscale ultrasound transverse scan B. Grayscale ultrasound longitudinal scan C. Color Doppler imaging D. Enlarged lymph nodes along the posterior surface of the thyroid loops Number 5 of ultrasound signs of Hashimoto thyroiditis is hypovascularity of hypocoque areas is typical. 
diffuse hypervascularization is possible. The blood flow pattern with color Doppler and power Doppler is irregular and depends on the type of autoimmune thyroiditis. Number six, irregular, medium, coarse grained asymmetric elasticity of the parenchyma with compression ultrasound elastography. Number seven, the stiffness of thyroid parenchyma is usually normal or slightly increased with shear wave elastography. Number eight, irregular enhancement of thyroid parenchyma with spots of hypo or hyper enhancement related to the type or stage of autoimmune thyroiditis. Number nine, common reactive hyperplasia of regional lymph nodes, predominantly of five and six levels, pre-laryngeal, pre- and paratracheal, anterior and superior mediastinal. The outcome of autoimmune thyroiditis with thyroid atrophy and hypothyroidism is characterized with a substantial decrease in the size of the thyroid gland, decrease in ecogenicity, heterogeneous structure, hypovascularity, and dense pattern with ultrasound elastography. The margins appear irregular and blurred. The gland is often difficult to distinguish from the surrounding tissue. This picture shows autoimmune thyroiditis, atrophic type, echograms, A, grayscale ultrasound, transverse scan, B, grayscale ultrasound, longitudinal scan, C, color Doppler imaging, longitudinal scan of the left loop, D, compression ultrasound elastography, longitudinal scan of the left loop. The following four types of autoimmune thyroiditis are proposed based on ultrasound features. Number one, diffuse type, characterized by enlarged thyroid with an ordinary shape, will define the margins and diffuse changes in parenchyma. Number two, focal type. Number three, diffuse nodular type, characterized by a lesion or several lesions along with diffuse changes of the whole gland. Number four, mix it with nodules. This type exhibits true colloid nodules along with autoimmune thyroiditis. Diffuse type is the most common echographic finding among all types of autoimmune thyroiditis. The changes of the parenchyma cover the entire enlarged thyroid gland. Prevailing ultrasound features determine the following patterns. Hypoechoic heterogeneous, pseudo-micronodular, pseudo-macronodular, significantly hypoechoic, with prominent fibrous changes, hyperechoic heterogeneous. Autoimmune thyroiditis echograms, hypoechoic heterogeneous pattern, grayscale ultrasound A and B, Transverse scan B and D longitudinal scan of the left loop. Autoimmune thyroiditis echograms pseudo micronodular pattern A gray scale ultrasound transverse scan B power Doppler longitudinal scan of the left loop. Autoimmune thyroiditis echograms pseudo macronodular pattern A and B Grayscale ultrasound, C and D, pseudonodule in autoimmune thyroiditis, grayscale ultrasound and power Doppler longitudinal scan of the left loop. Autoimmune thyroiditis echograms significantly hypoechoic pattern, longitudinal scans of the left loop, A, grayscale ultrasound, B, power Doppler imaging. Autoimmune thyroiditis with prominent fibrous changes. Echograms. A. Transverse scan. B. Longitudinal scan of the right loop. In hypertrophic autoimmune thyroiditis, ultrasound determines hypoechoic or isoechoic foci with inaccurate contours, named pseudonodules. The term often implies a local hypertrophy of the thyroid parenchyma. 
which imitates through colloid nodule. In cases of enhancing cytotoxic process, they increase in size and heterogeneity and decrease in echodensity with a tendency to merge. The ultrasound image of abnormal thyroid parenchyma in gray scale mode is quite variable. Some figuratively named signs are often used, such as Swiss cheese sign is characterized by individual small sodium dules, which is hypocoic foci. Honeycomb sign describes small merging pseudonodules separated with parenchyma and or connective tissue septa, so-called stromal component, more common for long-term process. Cleft sign is sometimes defined in autoimmune thyroiditis with prominent fibrous changes and demonstrates fibrous hyperechoic cord in the structure of the thyroid parenchyma, separating the anterior and the posterior aspects. Autoimmune thyroiditis grayscale ultrasound A. Swiss cheese sign longitudinal scan B. Cleft sign transverse scan White night sign identifies a lesion of increased echodensity on the background of diffusely decreased echodensity of the thyroid parenchyma. This is a benign regenerative formation, usually larger than 1 cm in size. White night sign in autoimmune thyroiditis echograms Gray scale ultrasound A. Transverse scan B. Longitudinal scan of the left loop Giraffe sign refers to multiple thyroid lesions of increased echogenicity separated by thin hypocoic rims of the parenchyma. The term chronic autoimmune thyroiditis with the formation of nodules seems incorrect. Any lesion of various natures can occur in the autoimmune thyroid, but this is a different disease that often precedes the occurrence of autoimmune thyroiditis disease. The differential diagnosis of lesions on the background of autoimmune thyroiditis is difficult and often impossible. The following principal features of true nodules in autoimmune thyroid may be considered. Rounded shape, decreased or normal echogenicity, homogeneous structure, Smooth clear margins, perinodular vascularization with color coded Doppler, different elasticity of nodules, and the surrounding parenchyma with ultrasound elastography, different degrees of contrast enhancement with contrast enhanced ultrasound. Hyper enhancement is more common. The initial forms of autoimmune thyroiditis are often diagnosed with ultrasound. In such cases, characteristic changes in grayscale mode are not accompanied with the changes in color Doppler. Conversely, hypervascularity of the thyroid parenchyma may be the only marker of the diffuse autoimmune thyroiditis even with unchanged grayscale image. One frequent indirect sign of autoimmune thyroiditis is enlarged lymph nodes near the inferior poles of the thyroid loops and the isthmus. Lymph nodes in the anterior neck compartment can compose a chain that spread down to the anterior mediastinum. They commonly exhibit homogeneous structure and decreased echodensity, smooth, well-defined margins, and oval or roundish shapes. Lymph node vascularization in color doppler and power doppler is normally decreased with an unchanged vascular pattern.